With the recent P. Diddy scandal, the Nickelodeon Dan Schneider scandal, and the endless awful woke messaging in movies, people are becoming disgusted at what Hollywood has become and repulsed by the predators running this entire industry. And nobody has done more to expose the BS of Hollywood than Joe Rogan. One of the biggest problems Joe Rogan has with Hollywood is how it draws in crazy people and those who can't handle what acting demands of them, making them even crazier. But, th but this is one of the reasons why so many people are so crazy out here. It's they come here crazy and then the system gets them crazier. He's often stated that many of the people who get into acting are insecure, narcissistic, and probably have issues because of their childhood. And as they go through the audition process, their self-esteem just gets worse and worse through constant rejection. And why? Why is that? It's usually there's something up from childhood. Usually somebody wasn't paying attention to them, parents split up, something went wrong, right? So you take this person that's super insecure and has this exorbitant need for attention and then you put them through this audition process. The audition Ugh. process is the craziest thing ever. It, it, it devastates people's self-esteem because you just get rejected all the time, rejected all the time. Rogan recounted how stressful the industry was for one of his former girlfriends and many people he encountered while looking for work and how unhealthy this culture is within Hollywood. He mentions in the podcast how he began to notice that people change how they spoke to ensure they didn't offend people if they forgot someone, and how they would mold their opinions to match the people they were auditioning for, hoping with everything that it would increase their chances of getting picked. It worked for some of them, though they usually didn't go too far and were often stuck with some minor roles. He explained in another interview that he'd always found the industry weird because he'd gone from dealing with real people while fighting to a space where people felt very artificial, narcissistic and fake. For him, it felt like everyone was pretending to be someone else just to get auditions. I mean, the whole industry is literally about being somebody else. You know, I'd come from fighting and then went right into stand up. And this was only a few years later, I'm doing this. You know, I had my last fight in 89. So this is 94. I mean, this is just a few years after that. I was still very sketchy, <laughs> you know, so I didn't belong. I felt like I didn't belong there. I felt like I couldn't be myself. Everybody was like reading the Hollywood Reporter and Variety on set. I'm like, what are you guys reading it for? Like, it's like this. It was just the, the whole thing to me was like, this weird play that people were putting on where everybody was trying to pretend to be something so that they can get auditions. Worse so, when people get a little bit of power like casting agents, they ended up never speaking like they were dealing with real people. Instead, they would exert any amount of power they had over other people auditioning and acted like this role they were casting for was the most critical thing in the world. Something every actor in LA believes because they're so desperate to reach their dreams that just stems from childhood trauma. Casting agents that had all this power over you and they, they exhibited it, like they exerted it when you were in the room with them. They didn't communicate with you like, you're a person and I'm a person. They communicated with you like, you want something from me. And I don't know if I'm going to give it to you. Hmm. Let me see what you do. It was just the way they did it. It was just so shitty. These casting agents, according to Joe, seemed to enjoy that they could manipulate an actor into accepting any ideology and determine whether or not the actor makes it. So is it any wonder the movies that we see today are full of woke propaganda, considering it stems down from this entire culture of casting itself? Unfortunately for those who want to get into the industry, the insane mental toll that auditioning takes barely scratches the surface of the worst thing they'll experience in Hollywood. Cold turkey may be great in sandwiches, but there's a better way to break your bad habits. We're not talking about some weird mind voodoo from your crazy neighbor. We're talking about our sponsor, Fume, and they look at the problem in a different way. Fume is an innovative, award-winning flavored air device that does just that. Instead of electronics, Fume is completely natural. Instead of vapor, Fume uses flavored air. And instead of harmful chemicals, Fume uses all natural, delicious flavors. You get it. Instead of bad, Fume is good. It's a habit you're free to enjoy. It makes replacing your bad habit easy. It fills in the void in a natural, guilt-free way. And your Fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting, giving your fingers a bunch to do, which is really helpful for de-stressing or breaking your habits. And they just released base in January. It's a rested stand to rest your fume on when not in use, with a magnet inside that keeps your fume attached. And the fume device can actually be spun around on it, which is great for fidgeting. Personally, my favorite one to use is the crisp mint flavor. It feels so natural and fresh in your mouth, and it was way more flavorful than I thought, leaving a great taste in my mouth afterwards. And the actual wooden design of the fume itself is so beautiful to look at and feel. It's extremely well balanced and fun to fidget with. And because of the beautiful design and great shape, you actually feel cool using it. I highly recommend it. And you see, stopping is something we all put off because it's hard, but switching to fume is easy, enjoyable, and even fun. Fume has served over 150,000 customers and has thousands of success stories. And there's no reason that can't be you. So join fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the journey pack today. Head to tryfume.com 
patreon.com forward slash moon or scan the QR code and use code moon to get 10% off when you get the journey pack today. That's tryfum.com and use the code moon to save an additional 10% off on your order today. People will do everything to get into the entertainment industry, and even more to stay in it. But one of the most notable things is how people alter their opinions on everything to match those of the people hiring them. If you take a deep look into Hollywood, you'll quickly realize that everyone from higher producers to nameless personal assistants share the same beliefs. These beliefs influence everything from casting to which projects are greenlit and so on. Even though it's weird, it starts to make sense that people would adopt this. As Joe Rogan quote says, It's a kooky, wacky, uh completely insulated left-wing view of the world. These manipulative games and this twisted narcissistic mental instability that's particularly prevalent in LA has created a very toxic system and culture of people who hope to make it big like their idols they worship. And the people running the show will happily exploit a desperate person's dreams for personal gain. That's why one of the worst things about Hollywood is that anyone who has a different opposing political view will never be accepted into the woke liberal bubble that LA promotes. You must adopt a woke mindset because once you fit your bosses and studios narratives, you're much easier to control than those who can't consciously think for themselves. These types of people are ostracized, denied bookings, or just viewed with absolute disdain. Take Matthew McConaughey, for example, who shared his experiences with Hollywood and the entertainment industry's response to his faith in the Joe Rogan experience. While he himself is too large a star to be denied projects and never experienced any difficulties when it came to expressing his beliefs, he told Rogan that many in the industry who shared similar beliefs to him were nearly as open with their faith as he was. He thanked God for an award and watched as these people would go on to clap and stop because it could negatively influence their future. Particularly if you're a fundamentalist Christian or if you have Christian values, a lot of people frown upon that. Why, why, why do you think that is? And have you, have you had difficulties with that? I don't know. I, I haven't had difficulties. I have had, <laughs> and I won't throw any people under the bus, but I have had um, moments where I was on stage receiving an award in front of my peers in Hollywood. And there were people in the crowd that I have prayed with before dinners many times. And when I thank God, I saw some of those people go to clap, but then notice that, <laughs> whoa, whoa, it's gonna be a bad thing on my resume, and then sit back on their hands. <laughs> oh, wow. And I've seen people read the room and go, whoa, that wouldn't bode well for me in the future. Mm. If for getting a job or, or getting votes or what have you. Yeah. Um, I have seen that, I've witnessed that. He further remarked on what he called the hypocrisy and arrogance of people who had gone so far left that they wouldn't allow people with opposing viewpoints to exist within the same space as them. You know, one of the things that are, are, are people, some people in our industry, not all of them, but there's, there's some that go to the left so far as uh, our friend Jordan Peterson, who's back, um, saw his video being back, that go to the illiberal left side so far that is so condescending and patronizing to 50% of the world that need the empathy that the liberal side gives and should give to throw somebody's illegitimize them because they say they are a believer. It's just so arrogant and in some ways hypocritical to me. They preach tolerance all while refusing people's jobs because of their worldviews and religion. This is why these movies are so twisted, there's so much garbage messaging. This is why nobody wants to watch these terrible movies like Snow White that force in all these woke messages. It's no longer 1937 and we absolutely wrote a Snow White that she's is- She's not gonna be yeah, saved by the prince. She's not gonna be saved by the prince and she's not gonna be dreaming about true love. She's dreaming about becoming the leader she knows she can be. It's become particularly bad in Hollywood over the last couple of years. One of the most notable instances was a group of celebrities' response to the death of George Floyd. Now pushing the event aside, whilst the event sparked riots across the world, touching the hearts and minds of millions, Hollywood celebrities realized that they needed to have a say in this. And so they would voice their thoughts on the issue in a video titled, quote, I take responsibility, in which every celebrity involved claimed responsibility for what had happened and assured anyone who could listen that they would no longer stand for this kind of violence. I take responsibility. I take responsibility. I take responsibility. Unfortunately for them, their bubble was about to pop, as they didn't realize quite how ridiculous they truly were. And instead of actually helping the problem, they only seemed to enrage people even more. Joe Rogan actually laughed at the ridiculousness of this video. Yeah, because yeah, there's so beautiful. much virtue. This latest thing, where all these actors have this black and white. <laughs> 
video where and they're he, talking about racism. Like, I take you know, responsibility. Yeah, like, that one. what are you doing? You know what I was saying to my friend? I go, you know what that is? These motherfuckers haven't gotten any attention exactly. for months because they haven't been filmed. <laughs> well, we remember so jumping on it. He pointed out that the actors who had taken apart had been nowhere near the initial incident, so there wasn't really anything they could have done to stop it, and asked if they commonly encountered and ignored similar acts of violence. You know, like the massive homeless crisis that's happening in LA right now in Skid Row, and all the violence happening in the ghettos that they just ignore and dehumanize. Everything they try to do that virtue signals, like, you know, we're gonna take a stand, this is no longer gonna happen, it's not good. Like, nobody thought it was good! Yeah, yeah, like, this yeah. is not what this is, what this is is a fucking horrible cop! It's is a really bad guy Horrible. who killed somebody. It's not like these actors are out there being racist and holding people back and trying to, <laughs> that's not what you're doing. Like, what are you, you're taking responsibility? No, you're trying to get attention. That's what you're doing. You see, they actually seem to genuinely believe that because of their influence, this video would have a more profound impact on the world than it had. And Joe Rogan is very sure that the only reason they filmed the video was because they hadn't received enough attention for months because of COVID. And so they jumped at the opportunity to force themselves back into people's minds without really thinking about how out to touch they really were. He further remarked that they were so wrapped up in their ideologies that they didn't see what they had done really hasn't helped anyone. They need to be told how great they are and yes. pat on the back. And yes. they, that's what they need. And then there's some of them that are so wrapped up in this liberal and progressive ideology that they literally can't see how dumb this looks to the rest of the world. They think they're going to do a good thing and they think that through their celebrity they're going to use their platform and their voice and they're going to make a difference. Yeah. If you really think that as a, a professional actor you're going to make a difference with racism and crime and violence and police brutality, you should stop acting because you should go to a f***ing <laughs> doctor and get your head checked. It's completely fake, hollow virtue signaling. This twisted perception of reality and people's willingness to do whatever it takes to get into the top creates an incredibly toxic environment and culture within Hollywood, where higher ups have no trouble exploiting young, down on their luck actors and actresses, and it's even more common than you can imagine. During an interview with Theo Vaughn, Rogan spoke about how when aspiring new actors try to catch their big break, they're often mentored by older actors and taught to take on a new persona and way of life to appease those in power. And it's not unheard of for these mentors to force younger actors into sexual relationships with promises of rising in the ranks and exceptional projects that will get them noticed by the rest of the industry. He went on to explain that when these actors eventually made a name for themselves in Hollywood, they become nightmares to work with. That's why when people make it, like really make it, they become fucking nightmares. Because they want to punish people for all those years they were insecure. For all those years where they weren't getting picked. For all those years you fucking <laughs> pieces of shit didn't recognize That's my true. talent. As all the exploitation and mistreatment they'd experienced in their younger years has caused them to go on a sort of revenge quest against people who failed to recognize their talent earlier. One of the best examples of this toxic mentor-mentee relationship is former Empire star Bryce Gray's relationship with Will Smith, Dwayne Wade, and Lee Daniels. Bryce Gray's path to fame began as a street performer, where he tried to support a single mother with musical talent. It was this talent that would eventually lead him to partner with Charlie Mack, who got him to audition for Empire, and would later be the one to introduce him to Will Smith. While he didn't initially want to audition for the series that shot him to stardom, in interviews he would always remark how appreciative he was that Mack had pushed him to do it, and seemed extremely humble. However, as the years passed on, something changed. Like everybody wants to be successful in a celebrity and stuff like that, but it comes with, you know, bull sometimes and, you know, that's the only thing that I hate about it. Soon after he became very big, Gray was arrested multiple times on various charges, the most common being abuse. He was even in prison for 10 days after being charged with domestic violence against his wife. This jarring shift in personality had people wondering if Gray had always been like this behind the scenes and was just really good at hiding it, or if something had happened in Hollywood that scarred him. Now keeping in mind Rogan's way of thinking, if you watch Gray's interactions with his mentors and how uncomfortable and awkward he seems around them, a rather unsettling image of a young vulnerable star being taken advantage of by people he trusted starts to take shape. Shape. This image is made even worse by allegations from people like Jaguar Wright Johnson, who are more than willing to expose the twisted side of Hollywood. During an expose, she claimed that something was happening behind closed doors in the Pinkett Smith household that was causing young men to run screaming away from it. They're both bisexual, they do weird things in their house, and young men have left their house 
screaming to get away from them in their mentorship. The Smiths weren't the only couple suspected of this sort of predatory behaviour, specifically concerning Grey. Dwayne Wade and Lee Daniels were both former mentors of the 30 year old, and both had been accused of questionable behaviour. In the same expose, where Wright accused the Smiths, she mentioned that Wade had been hosting seemingly innocent parties that were actually a front to something much, much darker. Allegedly, he was allowing older men to have sexual relations with young boys in his house. I'm saying that because of the artist that I just spoke to not that long ago that got invited to a party at their house. Everything was cool up front till they went to the back and there was a bunch of old fuck and fucking young boys back there all naked in the way out. These are just allegations from her herself. But those behind the YouTube channel Culture Spill went after Daniels, highlighting an interview he did with Grey during which he was making a weird motion while repeating Grey's stage name Yaz. Flipping over to Yaz! Yes, yes, <laughs> you don't get to talk yes, to me too much, yes, 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 yes. You don't talk to me too much? Kiki's T also suspects that Grey was a victim of Diddy's. So it looks like the list of young industry men that Diddy allegedly SA'd is longer than we thought because word on the street is that Barshir Gray is one of Diddy and other industry men's victims. The rapper reportedly mentored the young star as a favor to Will Smith, but people became suspicious about what this meant when Gray's music career remained at the same level even after Diddy's apparent mentoring. When you combine Gray's already traumatic childhood with the insanity that he probably experienced regularly while working in Hollywood, you begin to understand why he did a complete 180 seemingly out of nowhere. Those experiences alone would be enough to make anyone go crazy, but combine them with bipolar and ADHD, and you've got a recipe for disaster that has no chance of being saved. Bryce O'Grey wasn't the first young star to be taken advantage of by mentors, and he definitely won't be the last. During the beginning of the Me Too movement, Anthony Rapp, known best for his role as Paul Stamets in Star Trek, spoke up about his own experiences with an elite actor, Kevin Spacey. Rapp claimed the LA Confidential and American Beauty actor was responsible for one of the most traumatic events of his life. The two met a few nights before the fateful incident. Rapp 14 at the time had recently appeared on Broadway, alongside Ed Harris, John Barrowman, and Judith Ivey in the production Precious Sons, and Spacey 26 at the time was starring in a revival of Long Day's Journey Into the Night, alongside Jack Lemmon. They were both enjoying a post-show gathering during which Spacey invited him to a popular nightclub, which he accepted, and later to a party he was hosting at his apartment in a few days. Rap was happy to attend the party, though he found that no one near his age had attended. So he wandered into the bathroom where he watched TV until he noticed Spacey standing in the doorway and realized everyone else had already gone home. The older actor never said anything to him. He just picked him up like a groom picks up the bride over the threshold, pushed him onto his bed, and landed on top of him, pressing into him and tightening his arms. Fortunately, Spacey didn't go any further as Rap managed to escape to the bathroom. He recalls that when he left the apartment, Spacey followed him to the front door and asked if he was sure he wanted to leave, to which Rap responded, yes, good night. Rap had initially planned to forget the incident, but as Spacey gained popularity, the now 52 year old actor's shame, fear and anger grew. Everything finally came to a head in 2017, when people began exposing another predator, Harvey Weinstein. Rap decided it was time for the world to know the truth about Spacey. Following the Buzzfeed article that exposed the ordeal to the world, Spacey took to Twitter to explain that he didn't remember the incident, but if he did behave as Rap described, he owed the sincerest apology for what would have been deeply inappropriate drunken behaviour. People were already upset by the revelation that another one of Hollywood's elites had a checkered past, but Spacey made it even worse by using the same tweet to come out as gay officially. And these tragic stories just keep on going. Diddy and Harvey Weinstein have enough allegations between the two of them to prove just how dangerous and predatory Hollywood can truly be. Especially if victims and those in power who know what's really happening choose to stay silent out of fear. One actor that people are particularly suspicious of due to his sudden jump in fame after working with Weinstein, Matt Damon. Several videos floating around have accused him of selling his soul to the devil. These videos often cite Joe Rogan as their source for these claims, but they're kind of stretching the truth a little bit. The most he Damon ever got from Rogan was an indirect link made by people who watched his podcast. During an episode with Joey Diaz, the subject of Harvey Weinstein came up, a common topic when Diaz appears on the Joe Rogan experience. And during their chat, Joey name drops a few people and claims there was no way they didn't know what Weinstein was doing behind closed doors. And the name that stood out to people was Ben Affleck. He and Matt Damon had been best friends since childhood, and both shot to stardom after appearing in and writing Good Will Hunting. Both credited their success to Weinstein, who bought the script from Castle Rock Entertainment, which owned it at the time and wouldn't allow either of them to star in it. They even thanked him during their acceptance speech of best original screenplay. But eventually, after the truth came out about Weinstein, Affleck was quick to condemn him, writing, quote, I am saddened and angry that a man who I worked with used his position of power to intimidate, sexually harass, and manipulate women over decades. This is completely unacceptable. He implied that he had no idea what was happening. 
Still, Rose McGowan, an actress who featured in a few of Weinstein's films and was very vocal about his misconduct, painted a very different picture of Affleck. McGowan was reportedly a victim of Weinstein's in 1997. Apparently after the incident occurred, she had told Affleck she had just come from Harvey's and he responded with God damn it, I told him to stop doing that. If she is to be believed, it means that not only did Affleck know about Weinstein's operations, but he hadn't done anything about it. Following this revelation and considering Matt Damon's relationship with Affleck, along with his long career with Weinstein, people quickly assumed he knew as well. Damon tried to defend his innocence, specifically concerning what had happened with Gwyneth Paltrow, another one of Weinstein's victims, but in doing so almost seemed to defend Weinstein. He admitted that Weinstein was a womanizer and a bully, but asserted that he had always conducted himself professionally around Paltrow. I was there kind of at the, that was the height of his power and that was his legend. That was his whole kind of MO. Like you, you know, could you survive a meeting with Harvey? Could you stand up for yourself? And the people who worked for him were like, you know, I'm coming here to make good movies. Miramax was the place, really the place that was making great stuff in the 90s. This level of criminal sexual predation is not something that I ever thought would was going on. This wasn't helped by the fact that Damon was briefly suspected of helping kill a story that would have exposed Weinstein's sexual misconduct in 2004. Fortunately, it quickly came to light that this wasn't the case and that he had simply called in to vouch for Fabrizio Lombardo, who ran Miramax's Italian office. Where you saw a lot of the hypocrites was in the first few days of this Harvey Weinstein oh, shit. Oh, please. Yeah. Please. Nobody this wanted is to say embarrassing. Shit. And you know what, man? At the end of the week, they're all fucking disgustos. Because they all fucking knew about it. Oh, they all knew about they it. They all knew about it for yeah. years, and now they all want to raise their fucking head. But you know what, bro? When Harvey was giving them movies, nobody was complaining. Whilst there is no hard evidence against Affleck or Damon, and no proof of their involvement in Weinstein's operations, neither seems innocent in the eyes of the public. Another source brought for Rogan is actors' willingness to lie or withhold the truth to secure their careers, especially when said actors are lying about something like their physical appearance and how they keep in shape. Now, Rogan's been in the fitness and MMA sphere for years, almost all his entire life's been around fighting, so he knows what he's talking about when the topic of a person's physique comes up. Now, Rogan openly admits he takes TRT, an external testosterone testosterone source, and obviously admits that he is a natural himself. Yeah, testosterone replacement therapy, hormone replacement therapy, I started doing all that when I was 40. As the issue isn't taking something, but more so lying about not taking something. And he seems to have a particular bone of contention with Dwayne The Rock Johnson. When Emo is exposed in the regimen of the Liver King, a fitness influencer who promoted an ancestral diet of raw meat, were posted online, and the Liver King was fully exposed to the public, Rogan then invited the man who exposed the whole email exchange onto his podcast. During their talk, Joe Rogan commented that he wasn't surprised about the steroid use because, quote, there's no way you can look like that in your 40s. There's no way you can look like that. No. In your 40s, that jack. I mean, he's preposterously jacked. There was nothing controversial about the claim until Rogan followed it up with an accusation against the beloved WWE star. Using the statement as a foundation to solidify his next words, Rogan explained that there was no way The Rock could maintain muscles that he has at the age of 50 without the help of steroids. First of all, you wouldn't maintain that kind of mass as you naturally got older, normally, no. right? He doubled down on the statement by comparing photos of what Johnson looks like now to what he looked like when he was only 30, which biologically speaking should have been when he hit his peak for physical fitness. It's more recent because yeah. that's the, the crazy tattoo. That's him now. I mean, this is uh, much older. I mean, he's a fucking massive. That wasn't the case for The Rock, who is currently larger and way more defined than he was when he fought in the WWE. And Rogan isn't the only one who accused The Rock of steroid use. In a short video on his YouTube channel, UFC legend Chael Sonnen, who's actually admitted to his drug use in the past, voiced his opinions on the matter. He claimed that Johnson and his entire family have always denied that they've ever used steroids. But what Joe was saying The Rock did, which is steroids, is something The Rock has denied. His father denied, his uncles denied, the whole family's died. It's it's one of those things. In all fairness, it wouldn't be that big of a deal if you weren't out there telling people about nutrition and telling people about your diet, telling people about your workouts. As soon as you start doing that and trying to influence and motivate and bring people along the journey, but you lie to them about the journey, right? I mean, he's liver king. You're liver king all over again. And the reason the men are so loud about the rock's alleged steroid use is because his lying about this sort of stuff is incredibly damaging for his audience and male's expectations of realistic body standards. He set an impossible standard that he claims you can achieve by following his diet and exercise program, and his young fans will believe him without any hesitation. This is The Rock, the 
WWE star they grew up watching and copying, the comedy actor that made them laugh with every interaction he had with Kevin Hart, how could he ever lie to them? Then when they follow his regimen and don't bulk up the way he claims to have done through his method, it kills their self esteem and can lead to depression and a myriad of other problems. Rogan knows this so he's vocal about Johnson taking responsibility and being honest with the people listening to his platform. You see Hollywood wasn't designed as a space where people would go to make their dreams come true, though it was often advertised as such. It's a crazy place that draws many crazy people and if you're not careful you will be sucked into its vortex and have very little chance of coming out unscathed. Rogan always claims that Hollywood is out of touch with the rest of the world and has run like a crazed cult and I'm kind of inclined to agree with him. 